It's much better if someone is not a piglet in a situation when you want them not to be a piglet. But of course, if you want them to be a piglet, then that's all right. Even then, it's a bit of a pity, because they probably won't last long. This wet spot there, but that is because I've just been putting water on to clean off, because I had some ketchup on there. That's why. But I realise now that was a mistake doing that whilst I'm being filmed because people might think, oh, why has he got a wet thing on his trousers? Because it's because I was trying to get the ketchup off. I always make a new ad lib, especially on a Tuesdays. It's one of my ad libbing nights. Thursday, I can make up to three or four ad libs. On a Monday, I can go wild. I can make up to six ad libs. But of course, I don't want to discuss this too much because I'm revealing the secrets of the comedian's trade. All I would say is the comedian's job is to make things up and the comedian's job is also to say things that he or she has said many times before and to say them again and make them fresh. That is the comedian's job. Oh, oh hello, Piggy. Oh, hi, just saying hello to the Piggy. Oh, oh Christ. I'm talking, excuse me. I wanted to stroke the piggy. Piggy! Piggy! Excuse me, piggy! Well, I never really had many comedy influences. When I started, I didn't really, I'd never really watched any comedians, so I didn't really know what stand up comedy was. And when I first performed, I didn't even understand how it works. I just thought you're supposed to, I didn't know you're supposed to have sort of like jokes he prepared. So I just went on and just said things like, can anyone name a fruit? And then I would just ad lib, improvise off what they said about fruit and say, mmm, pineapple, very juicy. Anyway, it was a great success. And then, um, I then carried on doing comedy for about 21 years. And I have of course seen many comedians over that time because I've been working with them. But I haven't really taken my, I just do my own thing. I just create my comedy in a sort of creative vacuum. So I wouldn't say there's been a lot of, I mean, maybe there has been, but there's not been in, in any knowing way. I haven't sort of thought, oh, so-and-so is a big influence. I'm not really a comedy fan. If I wasn't doing comedy, I probably wouldn't go to it. In fact, the only, I mean, I'm doing, it sounds terribly self-indulgent, but the comedy I do is the comedy I would want to watch if I were an audience member, which I suppose is not most comedians, I suppose. I am a surreal comedian, but of course we have to remember, um, I didn't, I mean, I never planned to be surreal. Well, I suppose I was interested in surreal ideas, but I certainly never planned to be unusual or anything like that. I mean, I just did the comedy since I started 21 years ago that seemed the most obvious comedy that I just wanted to do. I didn't think I'm going to try and be different. So that was, I just did my thing. And then afterwards it was up to other people to say whether it was different or not. I've always been interested in surreal ideas. I find it very interesting. I think surrealism can, well, it just touches things in a different way to, to um, perhaps more conventional observational comedy, although I do do more conventional observational comedy in this current show, I mix them up. So, um, the answer to your question, which I've forgotten what it was, but the answer is yes. I've brought in the serious issues into this show because the serious issues are by their very nature serious, and so they must be issued. But of course, it's all done in a very silly way. And of course, it's combined with some very non-serious issues. Things that are not important, like a recreation of the film Titanic, which is not of any importance to anyone, but is enjoyable and revealing. <laughs>